Section 7.4 talks about basic trigonometric equations. We're looking at example 1. It says solve the given system graphically. So we need to graph those. A rough graph will do, it doesn't have to be exact, but so this graph amplitude is one, I go up one, down one. A graph of a cosine wave starts on the amplitude, runs down to the amplitude, back to the starting point. But they didn't restrict the domain, so I need to go on. That's another period. And another period with the idea that this continues. And to the left, the same thing happens. That's one full cycle. That's another cycle, and that's, again, it continues on. So this is y equal 1, y equal negative 1, and I know this is 1 fourth of the period, pi over 4. Oops, 1 fourth of the 2 pi. Pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 8 pi over 2, 9 pi over 2, 10 pi over 2, 11 pi, and the list goes, it never stops. This is going to run forever. Now I'm going to take this line, y equal 1 half, and I know 1 half is right there, and I'm going to sketch it back. And what do you notice happens? I notice there are a lot of intersections. I figure that the graph intersects. Pretty much that's an infinite amount. How am I going to list all of these solutions? Well, let me see if I could figure out what the first point is. If this is pi over 2, it seems this is the equivalent of quadrant 1. But if I want to solve this algebraically, I will set those equal to each other. And I know what the reference angle is. The reference angle, and in case you missed it, I know you miss it a lot, but here it is. Cosine equal one half, cosine of 60 degrees, pi over 3. So I know this angle right here is going to match with pi over 3. Not only that, I know that cosine is positive in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 4. I could figure out what this angle is as well, because pi over 3 in quadrant 1 is pi over 3 because the cosine is positive and in the fourth quadrant I know it's 5 pi over 3 so I figured what this point is so I'm tempted to say x equal pi over 3 and x equal 5 pi over 3 but I notice this happens again. So if I take this, I know this happens again and again, but this is what I know. These are periodics. This is a period apart. So if I take the starting point and the period for our cosine is 2 pi, guess what? I'll figure out where this point is. So if I add 2 pi to this, that will work. Pi over 3 and pi over 3 plus 2 pi and if I add another 2 pi so pretty much I'm getting this list I'm getting x equal pi over 3 
I'm getting x equal pi over 3 plus 2 pi, pi over 3 plus 4 pi. And if I go backwards, x equal pi over 3 minus 2 pi. Can't I simply say, instead of listing all of these infinite, and I'll never finish listing them, can't I say this is pi over 3 plus some number times 2 pi? Some books use 2 pi k, sometimes use 2 pi n. I like k. What's k? All the integers. k equals 0, I'm right there. k equal 1, I got the solution. k equal 2, k equal 3, k equal negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. And doesn't the same thing happen with this? If I look at this 0, if I add 2 pi, doesn't that get me the next time it happened? Because these are periodics. So anytime they say find a solution, there's an infinite amount of those. I have to list. all of those unless they tell me look between 0 and 2 pi or between 0 and pi or anything like that now the first problem I did graphically so you see what we're doing but we're not going to be solving those graphically we're going to be solving those algebraically and how are we going to solve them well right there we're going to figure out the reference angle where's their tick function positive or negative add 2 pi k to it we're done so if I look at this and I ask hey this is that problem right there First things first, what's the reference angle? The reference angle we said was pi over 3. Then you ask yourself, where's cosine positive? In quadrant 1, it's the reference angle. In quadrant 4, it is 5 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k plus 2 pi k. I do want to point out something important. something that's going to save you a lot of pain when we get to the next section the angle doesn't come up until the last step that's very important so this work would do for anything meaning any type of problem this will work on whether it is theta two theta but we're not going to deal with anything other than theta or x and those would be my solutions. There. Now, if I look at another problem, how about the cosine of theta equal negative one half, negative radical two over two? Let's find the reference angle that would be wise. The reference angle is pi over 4. Ignore the plus or minus. So always find the reference angle first. I got it to be pi over 4. Very good. Now what? Now, where is a cosine negative? Cosine is negative in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3. In quadrant 2, pi over 4 would be 3 pi over 4. And 5 pi over 4. So, my answer is going to be 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k, because sine and cosine have a period of 2 pi, and 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k, where k is all the integers, and at the last stage of the game, I bring the angle in. That's very important. And that would be my answer right there. All of these infinite amount of solutions. What if I wanted to know where does the sine of theta equal radical 3 over 2? Well, what's the reference angle? And again, it's as complex as you just doing what we've been doing. Sine is radical 3 over 2, a reference angle of 60 degrees. What's the next question? Where is sine positive? Quadrant 1 and 2. In quadrant 1, it's the reference angle. In quadrant 2, it is 2 pi over 3. So, my answer is going to be pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, or 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, with what? The angle coming up at the last stage. The last step is where the angle comes in, and there it is. And that's pretty much what we're doing. 
I want you to be comfortable with this before I go on and move on to the more complex type of problems. So here's another one. Tan of theta equal negative one. First things first, what is the reference angle? My reference angle in this case happens to be tan of which angle equal one pi over four. Secondly, Where's tangent negative? Tangent has a unique property. Tan and cotan. In quadrant 2, it's pi over 4, 3 pi over 4. In quadrant 4, it is 7 pi over 4. Right? And what does that mean? That means I'm getting 3 pi over 4 plus not 2 pi k, pi k. Why pi k? Because tan and cotan happen to have a period of pi. 7 pi over 4 plus pi k. Well, guess what? Tangent is very special. The angle comes up at the last stage. There's the angle. Those are fine. But this is repeating this. You look in the back of the book, and the only thing you see in the back of the book would be this example. Why is that? Because with tan and cotan, if you add pi to this, you will get that automatically. Sine and cosine repeat every two pi radians, but tangent appears every pi radians. So you really don't need this. That's good enough. For tan and cotan, you could do that. How about part E? Well, if I isolate the trig function by itself, I'll get negative radical 2 over 2. I know the reference angle is pi over 4. If I know the reference angle is pi over 4, that's half of the problem. What's the other half? Where is sine, cosine, negative? Quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. Pi over 4 in the second quadrant. So what's my answer? 3 pi over 4. If it was tangent, I would have only listed the first one plus pi k, since it's cosine plus 2 pi k, or 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. What? I'm going to set that equal to the angle. And there it is. And how about part F? If you isolate the trick function by itself, here, a reference angle, actually it's a fixed angle. That's a special case. Anywhere I get 0 or 1 or negative 1, I know that only happens right there. That only happens at 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. What equals that? The angle. What's the angle? And that would be my answer. So this first video we're going to stop here. And we'll finish this up after you get a chance to try those and ask questions. In.